Today, I am excited to announce that we are coming to market with our auth point, which is our multi-factor authentication component. Now, many of you might be wondering, well, how can we leverage multi-factor authentication? How can we secure our passwords? We're going to cover all that today, plus the question of, do I need WatchGuard uh, firewalls to be able to leverage multi-factor authentication? And the good news is, for that question, you don't need WatchGuard firewalls. We are completely independent of our firewalls for our auth point solution. So as we go through this, feel free to use the questions pane. We'll address the questions at the end. But without further ado, let's jump right in. We're gonna cover the how um, and why MFA, what is the value of uh, bringing MFA to our security, um, our security perspective, if you will. And then we're going to give you a short demonstration on how um, AuthPoint will actually work in, that, in those environments, and then possibly do a follow-up if there's interest, do a follow-up on how to um, do more uh, specific tasks when it comes to syncing your Active Directory users or setting up SAML integration. So with that, um, let's go ahead and kick things off. So as many of you are aware, stolen passwords offer the, one of the quickest paths into the network. I was uh, watching a video the other day and they said well you know why I do this when we have the keys to the front door we can simply walk right in as a credentialed user and part of the reason for that is our number one top action used in breaches is stolen credentials or leaked credentials now as we talk about that you know I many of you do realize I worked at a school district and I can't tell you how many times I walked into a teacher's classroom and lift, uh, lifted up the keyboard and there was the password or on the side of the monitor and just broadcasting that to the world. So when we talk about that, that's one way where you have that um, lack of physical security or that password's written on a post-it note. Now we actually have, um, well, we've had for some time, a more complex um, scenario that we need to stop as well. And that's where password are leaked through breaches. And 81% of those breaches either leverage a stolen or a weak password. So a weak password might be, you know, under six characters, one word, no capitalization, no punctuation. And 1.4 billion of those hacked or leaked passwords can be found online in a dark web. So ultimately, identities are on the loose, and what can we do to address that? We see here hackers are using Uber's 57 million account data breach to steal passwords. And all of these data breaches that you and I have been talking about for the past um, four years, five years now, ultimately come down to that leaked password, username and password. And unfortunately for this uh, gentleman, we see here, um, you might remember the missile warning that came out from Hawaii and this surfaced shortly thereafter where this was a picture that um, this gentleman posted to social media. And if you look closely, it says his password right there, warning point two. Now this isn't necessarily directly related to the um, missile alert that happened, but we see how easy it is. People are posting selfies with passwords um, in the background. So the number one tip, and hopefully you guys are all aware, I've been um, evangelizing the message of check for those leaked passwords. Now this is a um, great website, it's a nonprofit organization that you just go in and type in your um, email address and you can actually check to see if you've been uh, pwned. So it's haveibeenpwned.com. And again, it's a nonprofit organization that basically helps identify whether or not your username has been compromised in that leak. So if I look at a sample of uh, John at Hotmail, we can see, oh no, pwned in 121 breach sites and found 663 pace of that. Now, if we dive in, we can actually see, okay, eight tracks, abuse, there's the Adobe data breach. We take in even the, um, exploit data breach. Now, many of you don't even realize that your passwords are out there in plain text. So make sure that you go out, check these, make sure that um, you're not using the same password. You're using the good password strategy of a random password generator like a LastPass. Um, but even that uh, has its um, weaknesses. 
So your employee's best effort is not good enough. 6% of internet users using the same password across all internet accounts. So as I go out and I talk with people, obviously, the number one thing that I would suggest is that people use a tiered password. So, or first and foremost, they use random passwords, but sometimes that's too complex. If we're talking about a typical user, that might be too complex to have a random password for every account. So definitely, I would encourage you to have tiers of accounts, right? You have your financial accounts. It's a very more, uh, sorry, a more complex password as opposed to just a generic um, account. And so as you look at your um, passwords, you might have five different accounts across your tiers or your verticals of what your accounts are for. A person has a typical or an average number of over 90 online accounts. So how can we manage those? So one might be to use a password manager and then 37 or the number of online um, average persons they've had to use the password reset. So what can we do about our users? I always used to joke and say, my life would be perfect if it weren't for our network users. And unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, there's a couple of acronyms that deal with, I think it's a PEBLAC, problem exists between chair and keyboard. Many of you that are network administrators can relate to that. So how can we address that uh, security? So with that, obviously, with talking about OffPoint and our multi-factor authentication, we're now introducing WatchGuard authentication component. And we actually acquired a company out of Brazil uh, called Datablink that's been dealing with this for about 10 years, um, more on the financial side, and bringing that technology down to the SMB space um, and, and making it super simple for our users to be able to use. So what is multi-factor authentication? That's using two or more authentication factors. So um, today, many of us use a username and password. And by the way, just because you have to guess the username or the email address and have the password, that doesn't make it two-factor authentication. Two-factor would actually take that beyond um, your password or PIN and taking it into something that you have. So um, you might remember the RSA uh, tokens that are on a keychain. And if you're me, you hate carrying around all these um, tokens or all these uh, discount cards. I like to have my keys as minimalistic as possible. So that doesn't really work for me. Now the mobile phone, I do carry around everywhere at my mobile phone. And in fact, probably use that more than my laptop. So that makes a great tool to be able to use as a multi-factor authentication component. And then something you are. So whether it's your fingerprint or face, you can actually tie into that as well. So again, as we talk about your password, something you know, your password, that's one level. Then we tie in the second level, something you have, which is a token on your, token on your phone. And we're actually, with OffPoint, extending that protection even more because we're also tying it into the biometrics of the phone. So if Wendy were to try to hack me um, and try to steal my OffPoint uh, token, fortunately, my token would say, Wendy's phone isn't the same as Johan's. We've already married Johan's phone. We're not going to allow Wendy to try to impersonate Johan's phone. So fortunately, we have that uh, component as well. And then something you have, which is your phone DNA, which I just described of marrying it to that phone. We can actually take that one step further and say we also want your biometric, um, your fingerprint or your facial um, ID recognition. And that ultimately is multi-factor authentication. So as we talk about how we can leverage multi-factor authentication, obviously one of those components is through a VPN option. We also have a number of other options uh, that we can leverage multi-factor authentication in as well. And just bear in mind that, or um, remember that if you actually wanna see, go into deep dive into these integrations on how to sync your Active Directory users, feel free to let us know um, in the comments pane and we will um, schedule a special, up, uh, special follow up on that. So are all multi-factor authentication solutions good? And unfortunately, they are not. They're not at the same level. So they are better than just using a username and password. But if we take one of the ones I remember reading for years now that SMS multi-factor authentication is not a good um, security measure for using multi-factor authentication. Now there's a number of reasons behind that, but 
ultimately, um, there's obviously some weaknesses in the SSS or SS7 routing protocol. But the biggest fact is that SMS is an unencrypted. We also have other factors going on, which I'll touch on shortly. But as we look at SMS, multi-factor authentication, actually in 2016, the chief technology officer of the US Federal Trade Commission had her phone hijacked through SMS, a multi-factor authentication hacking. So ultimately, um, it comes down to SMS is unencrypted. It is not a safe um, method of doing multi-factor authentication. Now, you might have read, and this was um, really recent, August 1st of this year, Reddit um, had an SMS hack. Attack breached several workers' accounts in June of this year, obtained complete backup data spanning 2005 to 2007, and that data included, obviously, sensitive data, usernames. Now, those passwords were hashed, but it doesn't take much to brute force um, hash passwords that are shorter. The more concerning for some of um, the Reddit users would be the private messages that were also released on there. This was interesting, a quote that I came across from a Reddit official said, already having our primary access points for code and infrastructure behind strong authentication requiring two-factor authentication, we learned that SMS authentication is not nearly as secure as we would hope. The main attack was via SMS intercept. We point this out to encourage everyone here to move to token-based two-factor authentication which we do um, deliver two-factor authentication um, on a token uh, via phone. Now, the other component on this that, um, that we're actually seeing more and more of is that mobile malware is on the rise. And if you've read the security predictions from Corey Nockreiner, our CTO, you see that um, the increase of Trojans and malware. In fact, this year we also had Kevdroid, which had the following capabilities, quite alarming. That they were able to record phone calls and audio, steal web history and files, steal call logs, emails, and more importantly in this environment, SMS um, uh, records. So when we talk about you know, the importance of using WatchGuard's um, sandbox analysis, APT blocker, one of the components it checks for is our APK files, and that's because APK files are where these um, malware or Trojans are hidden for Android. Now, um, unfortunately, all too real, my friend's Cash App account got hacked for $1,800 plus dollars by using SMS-based two-factor authentication. Now, as we go through here, I was able to um, convince her for some screenshots, but as we look at the activity here, um, we see first thing that someone tried to cash up her a dollar, probably ju just trying to see if it was a valid account. Now, Cash App is one of these applications that sprung up online. Um, I use it extensively with my friends because if we go out um, and we need to cash app each other some money to pick up the tab at a restaurant, we can just cash app very easily. So along these lines, we have Venmo, PayPal. So it's just another cash um, application on any uh, smartphone. Now, unfortunately, as we look at this progression of events, after the um, user was denied, um, so my friend blocked this user from requesting a $1 transaction, but they saw that the account was live, and boom, 400, 400, 400, 400, and $100 out, siphoned out of the account instantaneously. Now, how is this actually possible? If we actually look at the, um, and again, she was kind enough to um, uh, share the text messages that went on behind the scenes. Now, as we look at this, um, so we see here, starting from the ground up, um, sign-in code. So there's the sign-in code of 844119. So someone logged in, they needed a sign-in code, they grabbed the SMS log from this phone, boom, we have the sign-in code. Now they need a verification code. They actually unlinked the phone number, as you can see here, so that they wouldn't get any addition, um, excuse me, any additional notifications of that account breach. They reset the cash pin, as you can see here. Notifications turned off and then requested um, money. So we just actually, it was a reverse, so request the money. And you can see that progression of a siphoning on those accounts. 
So why OffPoint? What makes OffPoint so special about it? So obviously, um, it is a WatchGuard product, and just like everything uh, from WatchGuard, we simplify to make it easy for SMBs to um, set up, configure, and um, roll out to our users. So one of the, um, or basically MFAs, tra traditional MFAs need um, have three different areas that are difficult. So one is hard to manage hardware tokens. As I mentioned, I don't want to carry around hardware tokens on my keychains, so I want it to be simplistic. The other thing about hardware keychains or tokens is that they are expensive, they're an added item to carry, they're hard to distribute, and ultimately someone can end up stealing them. So on my phone, I do have find my iPhone, so if someone stole my phone, they would have to actually break into that, and I can actually track down where my phone is through that. We don't um, require USB connection. Now, as we also look at the um, area number two that's challenging, we have gaps in coverage. So remote network access, VPN, cloud applications, or computer logins. Very few solutions out there are able to address all of those um, areas of coverage. Now, OffPoint obviously does cover all of those uh, situations with remote network access, VPNs, cloud applications, and computer logins. The other component that we see more often than not is that MFA solutions are very expensive. Um, you need hardware, you need software to be able to maintain that expensive infrastructure, and you need your IT staff expertise to be able to um, uh, run the system. When we talk about MFA, OffPoint is a cloud service that is easy to deploy and roll out. Now, as we talk about WatchCard Off, or excuse me, WatchCard OffPoint, there's a couple of things. So we have the multi-factor authentication, which is using passwords, push messaging, phone biometrics, and tying it into your phone DNA. We have a mobile app that's available for iOS and Android, available in 11 languages. We have our one-time passwords, which is that what that OTP is. QR codes so we can easily scan um, to allow that through and multiple authenticators. So I don't need to carry around or have different software pieces for Facebook or um, Google or Dropbox. I can just have it all under one um, authenticator. And then we're leveraging the WatchCard Cloud. So if you haven't seen it, this is the first iteration of WatchCard Cloud, completely new product from WatchCard. Um, it had to be delivered for off point to um, be delivered to our customers and our partners. And then we have extensive MFA, our multi-factor authentication coverage, where we have dozens of third-party integrations, web single sign-on, and then Windows and Mac computer logins as well from there. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. So what makes it so special? OffPoint is not a MSS, a two-factor authentication solution. So as we talk about the vulnerabilities in SMS, the the fact that it's not encrypted. Um, OffPoint is a, we have a multiple a variety of ways that we can authenticate that. One of the, one of them is using a push method, which is the most secure. We also have the one-time password or the QR code on there. We have a low total cost of ownership because it is a cloud-based service. And we can also tie in identity store synchronization. So if you have um, enterprise customers, or enterprise uh, users, for instance, Active Directory, we simply sync those to the cloud and it handles all that provisioning for you, um, automatic token provisioning, um, extending that protection uh, across your premise. And then again, OffPoint is a Firebox independent solution. So obviously it does work with our Fireboxes, but we can actually work with a number of our competitors and integrate the, our competitors' products into there using either Radius or SAML integration. And you can see some of our cloud applications and environments. So as I mentioned, one of the benefits of WatchGuard OffPoint is that we are leveraging WatchGuard Cloud from there. So as you can see, we have some dashboards and again, one of the um, uh, striving factors from WatchGuard is that we address easy to use and we address visibility. And with WatchGuard Cloud, you can see this visibility component. We have 23 failed authentications on this, so we can easily dive in and see what those failed authentications are. We can see denied push notifications, how many licenses are you um, uh, leveraged, all of that right from our um, dashboard. 
It's easy to configure. We just go under configure services. Now this, if you are a um, watch guard partner and you have uh, multiple customers, you can actually provision that. This is uh, geared towards MSSPs. Now, as I mentioned, we can sync to LDAP or Active Directory and allocate those tokens automatically. So as we go in and add people to users and groups, those users will just synchronize to our cloud, allowing them to you know, send an email saying, we need you to set up your token. And within a matter of a few minutes, they're now enrolled in multi-factor authentication. And then we have the ability to view reports. So the friendly Offpoint mobile app is a mobile authenticator, nothing extra to carry. It's easy for all employees to use. As I mentioned, it supports multiple authenticators. We can personalize with pictures and names, apply a pin and biometric, use the phone camera to read QR codes, respond to authentication, push, mes push messages without opening the app, install on the phones using iOS and Android and free to download. We do have obviously online and offline. So if you're in the plane, um, 20,000, 30,000 feet in the air, you don't have internet, you can still get into your devices. So I wanted to show you, um, just throw those out real quick and show you more of a live demonstration of what we have actually going on here. So this is a mobile phone that I have set up. This is the WatchGuard um, app here. We have the OffPoint app. We can see all of our tokens that we have. Again, we have we can tie even into um, Facebook. But before I show you that real quick, I wanted to take a step back and show you kind of more of the infrastructure components on there. So let me go in and go into my, um, let's see if I have those up here. So for my virtual machines, I wanted to show you how easy it is to set this up. The first one is my Active Directory users, right? So if I wanted to go in, let me log in real quick here. And we can see once I installed WatchGuard OffPoint, we have the gateway, we have LDAP and Radius all running on my Active Directory um, domain controller. Now what it's actually doing then is it's synchronizing to the cloud using LDAP. So it is not synchronizing passwords. It's not synchronizing, um, it, it, everything is encrypted to the cloud. What actually happens then is when we have a cloud computer, or sorry, a computer that we have OffPoint um, installed on, the logon app, as soon as my virtual memory catches up here, let me just demonstrate, bring over my phone. We have this uh, workstation that Jack Bloomhart is trying to log into, and he's going to go ahead and enter his password in here a little bit low on virtual memory. We click on OK, and it's logging in. As soon as it catches up, and it says, hey, by the way, um, we now are integrating in our two-factor authentication. Well, my computer is really low on virtual memory. We get the approval message. I click on Approve. And it should respond back to the workstation and allow that workstation through. Unfortunately, my virtual machines, I have quite a few of them running, so I don't end up um, allocating that much RAM to these. And while that's actually running, let me go ahead and show you the access portal as well. Maybe it'll be easier on my... We'll leave that off to the side. So the other thing is we have our access portal, right? So this is available on our 270s on up. This runs on the Firebox and is able to um, publish a number of resources. So we have websites, RDP sessions, everything right from here. So I wanted to show you again, hopefully this runs a little quicker. Um, the same session, we uh, log in here, Jack. Click on login, and it shows, are you trying to log in, approve the message, sends a request, and now, since it's not a virtual machine and doesn't need those resources, I'm now into our company access um, portal. So one of the benefits of that company access portal is that you can actually tie in, um, you have your RDP session, wow, 
finally came through, ladies and gentlemen. Can I get a round of applause for the virtual machine that's running low on resources? Finally came through and you can see how that works. Obviously, when you're tying into your um, desktops on your environment, you're not going to have that lag. Um, unfortunately, that was just my lack of resources on there. So moving on, we have our access portal, which is our, um, we have our RDP session in here. We have a number of uh, other applications. But one of the things I wanted to show you was our WatchGuard um, IDP. So this is part of our identity portal. Now within our identity portal, we can actually, this is using our single sign-on portal, and it's actually going to tie right into um, jack at bloomheart.com because I was logged in. And we can publish SAML resources right from here. So we have Salesforce, boom, within a matter of seconds, I'm now authenticated into Salesforce. Um, and this is part of our single sign-on application that's all using two-factor authentication. Now, as we look at what other resources we can use with that, we also have, let me just bring, go back to the slides real quick here. Um, so we have a number of other resources available. We have uh, Dropbox, Firebox, Access Portal, Office 365, Amazon Web Services, whole other plethora of websites that we can tie directly into um, our services right from here. So with that, that's an off point overview. Wanted to um, give you some time for questions. And then certainly, um, as you are thinking about um, how to integrate or some of the questions that we have, if you reach out to us, we can actually set a schedule of time to set up that integration component on uh, showing you how easy it is to set it up. But again, my apologies with the delay on that virtual machine. It's kind of the trouble with um, some of these virtual machines. All right, so are there any um, other questions, Wendy, that have come in? Sure, yeah. We do have a couple of questions. So one question was, I was just about to answer it, is OffPoint part of the total security suite? That's a great question. So OffPoint is indirectly part of the total security suite. So I am told that, um, that you will actually get a maximum of five users for one year for anyone that has total security but it is something that needs to be purchased long-term separately from total security. Great answer. And, and also, it, it is a standalone product, uh, very competitively priced um, based on users, and um, it's vendor agnostic, too. So that's, that's one of the real uh, key, key selling features of it as well. Um, lots of questions coming in. Hopefully, I'm able to uh, keep up to date. How often... app list get updated okay how often does the app list get updated is a great question so on there i would go ahead and set up um the app list i'm not sure if you're talking about the portal um on there but i can go in so a couple of things let me just show that to you real quick when i go into my firebox here um i can set up my access portal on there and that's how ultimately i set up those applications then i can also set them up through the idp if i wanted to that's the WatchGuard identity portal so if we go under subscription services access portal these are those applications i was showing you that can be set up and then the other one the access the apps through the um, identity portal is any apps that are available to set up with saml there's integration guides, we can just set those up and then those will be updated. So that's it. from a company perspective, talking about the integration, we are constantly looking at that integration guides. Okay. So we have a lot of questions today. Um, what if the internet is down? How, how is offline login to workstation handled? So if the internet is down, the um, it will essentially be like you're sitting in the plane, like I do quite often at 30,000 feet, trying to log into my computer, and no problem there because you are you have the roll-in tokens, as you can see here. So if I look at my phone, let me bring that back over for you. 
this is a rolling token or one-time password. So if I go back to my really slow machine here, let me log out real quick here. Um, second, if I log out and then I try logging in, I don't even know if that's worth it at this point. Um, one of the login options is to use the one-time password and I can easily just go in and use that uh, 679772 that you see there. I will spare everyone the painful <laughs> um, time of uh, trying to watch that go. But um, essentially, we would use the QR code or the one-time password that is rolling there. Fantastic. We are just right at 1030. So um, definitely, uh, I'll go ahead and keep the webinar open um, for the next few minutes. Feel free. The questions are, are trickling in. Um, quite a few of these we're, we'll take offline and um, we will have someone reach out to you ASAP. And particularly those of you that are new to OSPoint that have purchased the solution and have um, some support questions, we'll definitely touch base with, with you on that. Those of you that are asking about pricing, so I don't have the price list in front of me, but I will say that, that pricing is very relative to your daily Starbucks. Um, it is a per user, per month, um, charge. So we're just talking a few dollars uh, per seat on that, and it is a tiered system. So the higher number of uh, licenses or seats that you need, the lower the price point. But we will definitely follow up with you guys on that. And there was another question on the AuthPoint integration. So if we look at AuthPoint um, Active Directory integration, uh, so no, I saw a number of questions come through in there. So you can just use our Firebox or Fireware online. Um, let's, that's wrong. Let's do AuthPoint. And you have your, whoops. You can go into your, fire, your um, technical search. So under support, technical search, and look at those, off, um, excuse me, AuthPoint integration guides right online. So if we look at AuthPoint Firebox integration, we have here AuthPoint um, Firebox access portal. So again, my apologies, we're over time, but you can see a lot of those integration guides by looking at AuthPoint integration guides right here. Fantastic, thank you so much, Johan. Great presentation today. And then also two quick things before we go. Um, there are a number of handouts um, on OffPoint, so if you guys want to go check those out uh, in the OffPoint, or uh, sorry, in the handout section, you feel free to download those. Um, and then also, um, we will be having a follow-up to this webinar um, probably in the next couple of weeks. We haven't set a date on it, so if you're definitely interested in that, feel free to reach out to myself. Um, or look for it in your inbox. Uh, we'll send out the invoice, invites shortly for that. Once again, thanks for joining us.